Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks, welcome you all to yet another Friday vlog of mine. Another Friday has caught up with us people. Yes, it has. I'm going to apologise in advance for the lighting going up and down all over the damn place, people. <laughs> like I do on these lovely summer days. The sun is splitting the trees outside. So if the lighting goes up and down, there's not a great deal I can do about it, unfortunately. I don't have a, a studio <laughs> where we could just blank out all, uh, all natural light and just keep me sort of with a spotlight on me. Not in this particular setup anyway, so hopefully, if anything, it will be dimmer rather than brighter so it hides my wrinkles. <laughs> Dark, yeah, soft lighting, people, is your best friend as you get older. I think you'll find. <laughs> so there you are. So how are we all doing? Should we start with a bit of COVID chat? Why not? We do have much in the, the, the gaming chat to talk about this week. Uh, things that I want to uh, sort of have a good dig into with, to do with remakes and how well we'll get to it we'll get to it so covid another another week another another virus ridden week uh another another week of us all trying to manage by with this new world we find ourselves in where we can't just do what we want get what we want be where we want and you know i think in large, I think by and large, we're all doing exceptionally well, to be fair. There's always going to be a couple of nutters that, you know, here and there that just don't understand or... I mean, it's very easy to... I mean, I think I'm trying really hard to not become a curtain twitcher of the like of like, what are they doing? Why are they outside? Or, you know, I mean, I use my one... I mean, I don't go out every day for a run. I, I do four runs a week at the moment. So I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And those are my four runs for the week. And they can they can be between 10, and I did a couple of 16Ks last week. So it's about, but somewhere between an hour and an hour and 40 minutes, I do my run and I come home. And when I'm running, I always, always, always look what's ahead of me. If the pavement looks like it's too full, I'll go onto the grass. If there's no grass verge, I will actually... Pit, I'll already be running on the side of the road with the traffic that's coming toward me. So I'll actually go onto the road by the by the curb and run on the road. You know, there's plenty of room for the traffic. It's not dangerous. So I'll actually run there rather than make people uncomfortable on the curb. So I'm always dead conscious of it. And there's always a couple of times, because at the moment... I'm not running around the park anymore. I'm actually running from my front door straight across to the Blackpool seafront and then running up the seafront and then I come back the same way. And the seafront's brilliant. It's got loads of room and, you know, there's a few places it gets a bit tight on the pavement. And that's where I cycle up as well when I do take the bike. But at the moment, I've decided not to cycle and I'm just concentrating on the running. Um, because I feel like if I go out on the bike, I'll end up going further and I feel like with the running, I'm burning more calories anyway, and I'm getting more out of it. Um, so anyway, the, the bike's sort of taking a bit of a break while I, I just do running just now, but the, the, um, I, the, the amount of cyclists that have almost brushed elbows with me trying to come from behind and get round me even though I always run to the very left of a pavement as much as I can unless I need to move if someone's walking in the wrong way well the other direction in the same bit but they're a lot rather than wait or do anything to, to for them to get enough room they'll actually almost brush elbows with me as if they're because they're on a bike they don't need to be <laughs> away from you that's not how it works people you know what i mean now i can just say that most cyclists are actually okay but at my, on my runs the last today was okay actually but on the, the two previous runs to that it must have happened about three times with cyclists going past me and almost touching me they were that close to me and it made me think that maybe it this is a time to allow people to to, to cycle that's fine because it is a form of exercise but only allow it on the roads like if you want to to cycle then you need to stay on the road at the moment because it's just i don't think it's feasible on on the the, the walkways that are built for cyclists as well and and to be fair the, the one that i'm on is actually meant to you're meant to cycle at 10 miles an hour and they are not cycling at 10 miles an hour they're doing full pelt the people almost brush elbows with me 
So there's that as well. You know, I mean, kids is different. You know what I mean? If you've got a kid, say kids under 10 or something, you're out with your children and they're on their bikes while you're walking. That's a whole other thing. That's fine. But I think for general cycling, it might actually be a wise move for them to say you need to cycle on roads until it's over and then you can go back on the other walkways. But maybe it's, maybe it's, you know, and maybe I'm being over, over cautious, but it might be something to think about. But again, I think my whole, my whole point of this was that it's very easy to start judging people. And I try not to get angry when somebody does it because every now and then I do something out of nature and I realize that it's, it may have made somebody uncomfortable because I've got close for i just didn't realize i just lost concentration for just a second uh so it's very easy to suddenly you know um i mean i would i'm not the sort of person that would suddenly shout out something anyway you know what i mean i just let it slide and shake my head but they keep running but i it is very easy for us to start judging everybody that does something that we think is completely wrong in this situation and not think for a second that, hang on, maybe that was just their slip for the day. Because, you know, they may well have dodged 100 people before they got to me. And suddenly they've gone, oh, shit, I was far too close to that guy. I shouldn't have done that. And it's just, you know, it is what it is. We can't, we're not perfect in this situation. We're so, we're so ingrained in what we do. Like, there's no way of us all 100% of the time getting everything right. It's just the way of it. All we can do is our very best. So I'm trying very, very hard to not be judgmental about it. And I'm not, it might sound like I am because I'm saying maybe cycling should just stay on the roads for the time being. But, you know, I I just, it's not because of any specific individuals. I just think it's very difficult for both, for all walkers and dog walkers and, and runners and cyclists to all be on those pavements that are meant to be shared equally to some degree and uh and it and get two meters from each other and cyclists are the ones that are always going to run into the bother because they're going much quicker than everybody else weaving in and out so you know it just might be a sensible move is all i'm saying and that said during this lockdown i have been cycling on those paths but i've been very careful about it but i did recall myself getting too close to someone when i went round them one day and then realizing what i'd done so it is easy to do, but you know. But anyway, I'm trying. Uh, I'm trying very hard not to become a curtain twitcher, and and I think I think we've all kind of got a little bit of it in us at the minute, looking at other people going, oh, you know, why you're sitting down there and, and not moving? You've got to keep moving and go home. And you know, I think the rules are very they're very grey in places. Like you are allowed to go. Like you can go for a cycle and take a break, sit down, eat a sandwich, and then get back on your bike and keep going. But you can't go somewhere specifically just to sit down. <laughs> but how do they know? Like, you know what I mean? How do you how do you police that? You can't like if you walk up to someone and say, "Why are you sat down?" It's like, "Oh, I was on my walk, but I took a break." Or uh, you know, you know. But to actually drive somewhere to get out your car and sit on a bench, you can't do that. But you can walk somewhere, sit on a bench. And then walk back. <laughs> so that's like, how do you police it, people? You know, but I think by and large, I would say that probably ninety percent, ninety-five percent of people are trying their very best to do what they can. And there's always the minority that are going to be just saying, "I don't have to do that. This is a lot of nonsense," you know, until they get the bloody thing or kill someone by giving it to them. You know, but I know, like, I know there's people in the world that don't even watch the news. You know, so it's like. How would they even know what the rules are if they're not even watching the news? So, until somebody says something or they get to a shop and somebody says something. But anyway, I hope you are all coping with it. We in the UK, I know a lot of my viewers are from the US of A. I love you all from over there. And can I just say this? And I'm not going to get political. (laughs) But I'm glad Trump is not running our our thing over here <laughs> so like his conferences are the most bizarre thing i've ever watched in my entire life what is it all about people like i can't believe there's still people in the world that are are standing by everything he does like as as if he's talking sense like i don't understand i do not understand how anyone can defend that man <laughs> It baffles my head, people. Do you know what I mean? It's the only person I've ever seen in power 
that I have thought that about. Like, how do people listen to that and think that that's okay? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> it's the it's utterly and truly the most bizarre thing I have ever seen in my life. A, him running that country in the first place. I mean, it's just it's frightening. B, the way that he he says things and then says he didn't. The way that he handles press conferences as if it's some sort of def- it's some sort of I, I it's just bizarre. Like if you look at press conferences around the world, I mean, he does do his little speech about these are the deaths, these are the the sicknesses, these are the blah. But then I watched one the other night and it suddenly turned into this. He was reading out lists of businesses as if it was some sort of free advertising for his mates. Um, and then he there was another night where all he was doing was talking about something that wasn't COVID nineteen just to try and push his his electoral position for the votes coming up and stuff about all the the stuff that he's great at. And I mean, it was just like, I mean, it's just honestly, wake up seriously. If you're someone that sits and, 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 and watches that guy and thinks that he's the best thing on God's green earth, please wake up and see what everyone else sees because it is utterly bizarre, utterly bizarre. <laughs> I can't say it any stronger than I am people. It's just bizarre absolutely bizarre i'm gonna have a sip of this flagons up people i've not even said it yet <laughs> i said i wasn't gonna get political <laughs> fucking hell. and you know what's even more annoying is the democrats have had five years to sort themselves out since they cocked it up last time and he got in and the best they've come up with is the same guy that didn't get in last time it's like what i i, I don't understand like i don't understand <laughs> I do not understand how, like, for example, right? I mean, I understand, I don't, don't get me wrong. I don't actually understand the American voting system at all, really. (laughs) So, but, and I don't understand how governors put themselves forward and all that sort of stuff. But let me give you an example, right? Somebody that makes a lot of sense and seems like a really great guy. And I don't know a lot about this guy, but I've only, only because of his daily things in New York is, is it Cuomo? Governor Cuomo? I think that's his name and i mean what a great guy he seems to be he's got his head screwed on he's talking all that i mean he's 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 very factual he, he he's defending um new york constantly and trying to get everything they need and he just talks a huge amount of sense like why is why is somebody like that not a front runner in this sort of election campaigns and stuff i do not understand how the democratic party have not got people like that as the people that people are trying to pick from. I don't understand it at all. Like, it just makes no sense to me why they've just gone through a, a, a routine of getting the same two last people standing with the two people that couldn't win it last time. I don't get it at all. Like, what is that about? Absolutely bizarre. Anyway, so it's almost like, you know, Hillary got to run last time and, and that was going against the two that didn't get to run last time. So now they're left with the two that didn't, the two that weren't good enough to run last time. One of them's running this time. It's like, <laughs> what's that all about? You know what I mean? Oh, I don't understand. And I honestly, at the moment, I, I honestly think that, that Trump will get in again. Because I, I, I'm not convinced that people will vote for this guy. Because um, I'm, I I think he's a likable character, but I, I think he's too connected to the Obama administration so far as there's a lot of right-wing America that didn't feel like Obama did enough. Obama was... I loved Obama. Um, but I think as a as a global character, he was fantastic. I think as a... Well, we saw it in the mid-ter- midterm elections, as you call it, when he was in power. He lost a lot of the power in those midterm elections because people weren't happy with what he was getting done you know, locally in America. So I think, I think he might be too, too linked to all of that. Why have I gone into politics, people? What happened? <laughs> I don't know anything about America. Like, shut up, Steve. Right. Anyway, anyway, stop it with the stupid, maybe, maybe you should just designate the conferences to other people and he can go and sit at his golf course or something. <laughs> maybe that's best for everybody. You know what I mean? Whew. I could cut that whole segment out about politics, but maybe I'll leave it in and see what people say. <laughs> Don't hate me, people. It's just an opinion. Anyway, I hope you're all doing okay during this. Well, in the UK, we have just been told that we are keeping the current lockdown system in place for at least the next three weeks, which in my opinion is great because it's nowhere near ready for us to be having everybody back to 
to normal again. My personal opinion is that uh, I can't see how this is going to be okay to go back to normal living until we have a vaccine. And we're not going to have a vaccine for a year, people. So even when we decide we're going to start opening up businesses again and stuff. I think Germany are on the brink of doing things now because they feel like they've got stuff under control and other such places. But we're still going to have to be very careful about how we do it because if we suddenly just throw everybody together again and the, the people that have still got the virus start passing it about again, we're just going to find ourselves in the same situation we were, and, and then everything shuts down again and it's even worse when it happens again. So I think we're still going to be social distancing to some degree for about a year until we get a vaccine in place and you know i think we're just going to have to accept that and you know it won't be as tight a lockdown as it is now but i still think we're going to be told like try and keep two meters away from people i think supermarkets are still going to be told you know let a limited amount of people in and stuff like that so even when they say that it's okay to go back to work and stuff i think we're still going to be social distancing to some degree but you know i as, as people who follow the channel know i work for an educational establishment a college and i work remotely quite a lot anyway but if you were a lecturer or if you were a student yeah, it's very difficult to do when you're in a small classroom like how do you social distance from people you sat right next to you can't possibly can you so you know, it's concerning to me how we get out of where we are without a vaccine, because without a vaccine, the whole thing can just raise its head again. So, you know, I think we're I think we're all coping with it really well, though. I think most people understand that and they understand what I'm getting at there. And um, anyway, I hope you're all coping with it. OK, I don't think it was a big shock to us that we were locking down for another three weeks. Personally, I think at least it will be at least the end of May before we start being told that certain things can happen that aren't happening now. I would suggest that I don't think I don't think everything's going to be unlocked, if you will, at least till the end of June. But we'll have to see how the figures go. But it doesn't matter how low those those line charts drop. <laughs> It, it's, as, it's as quick as they can come back up if you suddenly shove everybody together again. It's going to be interesting to see like the likes of China and see what happens there because they're now telling everybody to go about the business again to some degree. They've got the app, though, that tells you if someone's had it or not, but I'm still not 100% convinced how that works because you're not forced to have it. So, you know, you could still be walking next to someone that's got it and they've just not bothered downloading the app or anything. And then you've got... I don't know. I mean, how, and, and you don't even know anyway if you've not had a test. And we, we've got no tests in this country unless you're a frontline worker, which, in my opinion, is absolutely fine at the moment because we couldn't possibly have enough tests to do everybody anyway. I mean, we've got people bleating on about everybody should have a face mask. Well, frankly, there is not enough face masks to do that. <laughs> we've already got the NHS and the care workers and everyone else at the front line saying we haven't got enough PPE. Where's our PPE? And... We're now saying that we all want them as well. Well, it can't happen, can it? How? How How are we going to get face masks to the entire, you know, population of Britain when we can't keep the flow going for the NHS workers or care workers or frontline workers? So, you know, there's a, realis a realism that has to be, real, you know, taken by everybody that that just can't happen, I think. The demand is just far too high if you suddenly start doing that. Anyway, that was a big intro, wasn't it? About nothing to do with gaming. But that's the power of YouTube, people. You can always fast forward. <laughs> Flag us up to you once again. I'm going to have a sip of this before I get into the gaming chat. Anyway, I hope you're all doing really well. I hope that this little chinwag about COVID-19 uh, helps people in some way. I'm coping all right with it at the moment. I am feeling uh, very isolated so far as... Um, I'm used to being on my own because I do work remotely a lot. But even for me, you know, this is a lot of... <laughs> You know, usually I'm at work a few days a week at minimum to get around other people, have a chat and a laugh and stuff. And, you know, it's not like I can just pop to the pub or anything. Uh, so my running is my thing that gets me out in the sun. And it's been glorious weather here for two weeks or so. It's, again, the same today and it's supposed to be the same next week. I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow, but then it's going to be the same for another week, two weeks. And I've actually taken, not next week, but I've taken the following week off. It's my birthday week. Yay! So I've taken the week after next off. Because it's supposed to be nice then again. And I have a, a massive decking. Uh, my decking outside needs a right good seeing to. So I've ordered a bunch of stuff. It's like my isolation quest. <laughs> I'm going to get it properly sorted out in that week. So I've ordered a jet spray because I don't own one. 
I forked out a bit of money actually. So I've ordered a jet a jet spray, a really good one as well. Um, so that's coming to be a jet spraying it all down on on multiple stages of what I'm doing. I bought a, a decking, a couple of cans of decking stripper that's going to try and get rid of all the stuff that's on it already and get it right down to the bare bone wood as much as I can. And I'm hoping that works on the fence parts of it because if it doesn't, then I've held off buying the stainer for that very reason because if I can't get everything down to the wood, then I'll need to go with like a mahogany type colour again, which is kind of what was there before. So it, you know, it looks okay. If I can get it down to the bare wood, I'll go with a stainer that's uh, more natural oak type type wood. So there you are. So that's my mission uh, coming up. I also purchased a brand new set of clippers, people. Woohoo! <laughs> The last few weeks, my hair's been like sprouting all over the place. Um, and I do have a set of clippers as it happens. Um, but they've, they've, I've had them a number of years now and they weren't the most robust. But they came with a really cool case and loads of bits. So anyway, I've, I bought a really like a proper barber's one that you plug in. The power of it's amazing. And I just have basically a half all over now. Because I'm not quite, like, the whole, the, the totally bold look is a totally different look. And that, I'm not sure that would work with me. But that, to have the sort of stubbly effect on my head, I, I've got used to it now. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I had a lot of hair there, actually. And I, I got it right down to my half in no time. I mean, it was just so powerful. It was like, <laughs> you just got to be sure you've got, I've got one of those little shaving mirrors I hold in front of the other mirror just to make sure I get the back sorted out. But now that I've got it back to this, I mean, it'll take me no time. I'll do it a couple of times a week. Um, I used to get it done, as anyone that watches the channel knows, I used to go to a, a barber's and get it, or a, a hairdresser's and get it done. Charge me a five or six quid or whatever uh, once a week. But now that I've got my own, I think I'll just do it a couple of times a week because it does get, like, it just annoys me when it gets too action manny. So anyway, and that's been my spending for the week. So there, this is going to be a long video, people. I've been talking a lot about nothing to do with games. <laughs> I think at the beginning of this video, I'm going to put a thing up saying, uh, I ramble on a bit here. If you want to get to the bit about games, <laughs> go to one minute, uh, one minute, 25 or whatever minutes. I'll put it up. I'll put it up saying, go to minutes blah on the video. Um, it could be an extended episode. This depends how much we get. Well, we get into this gaming tour, will we? Flagons up to you all. I'm going to have a sip. If you don't have one of these, and it's of an afternoon or an evening. Go and get one and join me, people. And we shall discuss all things remakes, which is our gaming topic of this week on a number of fronts as it happens. I'm going to have another sip, actually. I've been talking for half an hour. Right, so this is instigated by the wonderful remakes that have been taking place recently, and it is Capcom and Square. Square Enix. Is it Square Enix or is it just Square now? Square Enix. I'll say Square Enix. And uh, yeah, so we had Resident Evil 2 Remake. We've had Resident Evil 3 Remake. And we've had Final Fantasy 7 Remake. And all three of those games have got massive praise. More so Resident Evil 2 and Final Fantasy 7. Resident Evil 3 got a good good uh, a good response, but it wasn't quite as high as Resident Evil 2. But then the original game wasn't as beloved, I don't think, as Resident Evil 2. So what instigated my thought process of this was that there is a massive rumour sort of leaking out of Capcom that Resident Evil 4 is already remake is already in production. And I think a, there were so many people already talking about what do they do next. And I'd heard a few people mention Resident Evil 4. And every single person that I can find, other than my son, Aaron Brew, because <laughs> he loves that game with a passion. And as do I. But I think the games that kind of encompass what Resident Evil games were are... Probably Resi 1, Resi 2, Resi 3, and Veronica X. And Code Veronica X would have been my first choice of the next one to do, because then they've got all of the originals covered, haven't they? Because Resi 1 wasn't remade, it was remastered, I think, properly, though. And, uh, well, it, and was it, though? It was kind of a remake, wasn't it? But they kept the same format of it. They didn't make it an over-the-shoulder thing. It was the same 
format as the original and it was great and i've still got it in fact and oh yeah guess what i didn't finish it <laughs> it is great though uh, so for whatever reason, and I think the reason is probably that the the house probably wasn't big enough to justify an over the shoulder game. Maybe I think Resi Two, you kind of go to different, you know, you, you come out of that police building, don't you? you? Go to other areas and and what have you. I think maybe Resi One didn't justify a game like that, and it had to be kept more of a puzzle than a than an action. So, but uh, Code Veronica X is is ripe for the picking because she gets, she's in uh, a number of areas. It, uh, I think is it a, a lab type jail place, and then there's a Arctic place. Chris comes into it at some point. There's loads goes on in that game. I adore that game, and I am. Oh, I mean, I just I, that's the one I want next. I didn't want that. You know, I think a lot of people feel like it, the Resi Four's already been HD'd. For the PlayStation Three, it's already been re uh, and done, and for the PlayStation Four, so it's already been HD for current gen, and it plays just as good as it did because it was already an over-the-shoulder. It was the one that actually transformed Resident Evil games into an over-the-shoulder third-person shooter type thing, as well as a bit of puzzling. But it did take it away from the environment that we were used to for the Resident Evil games. So it was a very different environment. And I think it it didn't quite feel like the original Resi games, but it still felt like a Resi game to, to a big degree. But it was very different. I mean, it was way out there, you know. But I think it is... Pr I don't know what the sales figures are for the Resi games. I should have checked that before I did the video. But I think... I th I mean, certainly, that that is the sort of game where people say that it's one of their favourite games of all time, that game, Resident Evil 4. And I think touching it at all other than to just do it all over again i mean other than giving i said this to aaron that the, other than giving leon the ability to move and shoot at the same time what else are you going to do with that game you could probably do that with a patch <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> on the one that's already there because it looks great still now that it's hd'd so you know i'm not i'm not going to grumble at any game being remade and remade well because, you know, it's a, it's a massive leap graphically to move to what we're getting now. And bear in mind that we're talking about a Resi 4 on next gen, although they'll probably put it on this gen as well. But, you know, I'm not going to grumble at it. What I am grumbling slightly at is, come on, we, Veronica X was the next natural one. And so many people, everywhere I looked, everywhere that was talking about it, everyone that was asked about it, pretty much 99% of people said... Which one would you have preferred remade next? I should have done a poll. In fact, I tell you what, I'll do a poll actually. So by the time you see this, I'll see if we've had any answers on the poll, and I'll see what you guys think. But if you were given the choice between Resi, uh, sorry, uh, Code Veronica X or Resident Evil Four for the next one to be remade, which one would you pick? And we'll see what people say because it could just be me. But every everybody that I've seen responding to this, nigh on has said, oh, we wanted Code Veronica X first. You know what I mean? Fine, do it. But we're not, we don't feel like we're missing out on anything because Resi 4 is already that kind of game. But Veronica X is well dated now. They HD'd that, kind of, for PS3. Did that move over to PS4 as well? But it was literally like, it was a, the only thing that looked a lot better was the, me the menu where you put all your items and stuff was proper HD'd up. But the game itself was pixelated to shit all over the place. It didn't look great. And, but actually playing it, in fact, I think it actually felt better when I, I, I got it on the, I've got it upstairs actually in the attic because I've got the PS2 up there at the minute. It was PS2 Slim. And I rebuilt my PS2 collection over the years because I always regretted selling it. And I put Code Veronica X, because that's where I played Code Veronica X. Originally, it was on the PS2. And I got proper soaked up in it on the PS2. But I didn't when I tried to play it on the PS3. Uh, but I adore that game, though. And I just, I so wanted that to be the one that they remade next. However, having said all that, there is a chance, I'm just going to remind myself of my, uh, there, there is a little bit of a hint that Resident Evil 8, which is, uh, I'm going to get me, times and dates mixed up now i think resident evil 8 is due out 2021 someone can someone can correct me but i think this is how it's working right so resident evil 8 is due 2021 and then resi 
Resident Evil 4 remake would be 2022, I think. So what we're talking about is possibly a Resi game every year. One a remake, one a new one sort of thing. And there seems to be some sort of hint that there might be a link between Resi 4 and Resi 8 because it's called Resident Evil 8 The Village or something like that. And we know that Resident Evil 4 starts in that village in somewhere bizarre. can't remember now. Is it Mexico or... I think it was Mexico, wasn't it? I say bizarre. There's nothing bizarre about Mexico, but it was. <laughs> it wasn't. I'm pretty sure it wasn't America anyway. I'm sure it was Mexico or somewhere. Um. So there is a bit of a a thought process that they want those back to back because of that reason, and that's fine. I get that. If that's the case, then that's fine. But please, 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 still give me Code Veronica X remade, because the ah, oh, there's so much love for that game. There really is. And I think people look at one and two really belovedly. Three, not so much. I don't hear people talking about three a huge amount. Uh, but Code Veronica X, over the years, I have heard so many people say how much they love that game. And I think that is far more beloved than three. And I think, to be fair, I think Claire and Chris are characters that people love more than uh, Jill and... <sighs> What's this? Is it a Spanish guy that's in it? Spanish guy's name, I can't remember his name. Um, but, you know, I think those characters are far more beloved. And Leon, obviously. So, yeah, I, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. But I was gutted when I heard the Resi 4 thing because I so wanted Code Veronica X first because I just adore it. Like, it was probably the first Resi game that I really connected with. And it was at a point where I was really starting to get into my gaming, you know, more than I had been at the time. Because at that point in time, it was really just the football games that I always wanted and, you know, Lord of the Rings games, that sort of stuff was getting me in. Uh, and then I borrowed Code Veronica X from my mate Thomas and I mustn't have given it back for about months. <laughs> I used to sit when my girlfriend at the time went to bed and just sat there dark in the living room, like <laughs> scaring the shit out of myself playing this game. I've got so much love for that game. So, yeah, so I'm a little bit gutted about that. However, getting back to the fact about remakes. So I will get that poll up and I'll try and get it up before when you're seeing me speak about it. Hopefully uh, you can go onto the community section tab, whatever you want to call it, on the channel and you can see what the results of that are and take part yourself. And it doesn't shut down the poll, so you can keep adding to it. But I'll put that up. Uh, I'll put that up. So if you haven't voted by the time you see this, uh, then go onto the community tab and check out the poll and tell me whether or not you would have wanted... Resident Evil 4 remade first or Code Veronica X remade first. And we'll see what people think. Whoo! So moving on to Final Fantasy then. Now these are two companies that are really, really, really doing the business. Because, you know, I think we'd reached a point where people were like, oh my god, remasters, are we ever going to see the end of them, blah, blah, blah. But we seem to have reached a point now where it's like, we're not talking about remasters anymore. We're talking about remakes. And that's a completely different thing. And well, these are these both of these have done an ex, an outstanding job of it, and shown other other companies how they could revitalize or, in fact, just reboot old franchises that are just so dated. I mean, I'll give you an example: Knights of the Old Republic. Why not just do it from scratch? You know what I mean? Like, what would be the problem with that? It's a massively beloved game, not one that I've played, I might add, but I know that Knights of the Old Republic is a massively revered game, RPG, what have you. And it, but it, I mean, I think I looked, uh, did I download it? I, I, I think it was on Xbox Originals, and I'm pretty sure I either down, I did, uh, no, I didn't, I didn't, I just looked at gameplay footage of it. And I just thought, no, nah, it's, it's too dated for me. Um, and that's a game that would. But, I mean, that's crying out to be redone. You know, stuff like that. Stuff from way back in the PS2 and Xbox original days that could be redone and, and redone in a way that actually almost retells the story in a completely different way, which is what they've done with Final Fantasy VII from what Aaron's telling me. Because Aaron, my son Aaron's just, uh, he's just finished it today. Uh, at 3 a.m. this morning, he said. He kept saying, I'm near the end, I'm near the end. And he, he is at the moment, he is like, because it's so fresh and he just loved it so much, he thinks that it's his favourite at the moment. But, you know, that's a it's a tight call because I think his two favourites are 9 and 10 at the moment out of all of them. He adores the Final Fantasy games from 7 all the way through to um, everything, really. But 
his favourites are nine and ten. Um, I think I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that they were the two games that we played together when he was little as well. You know, there's a lot of memories for me and him in those two games. A huge amount of memories, really good ones. Same with Zelda Breath of the Wild. You know, uh, earlier. Um, so you know, but he still loves eight and seven. I think he went. He played seven original before this came out, just so he could get a sense of it. I think. Because I think he, I'm not sure if he'd ever completed it before that. But anyway, he wanted to refresh his mind of it. Um, but he just like, because I had this conversation with him. I was I was frustrated because they released, they're going to be releasing it in three parts. Final Fantasy Remake is just the first section of the game. And it's going to come in three parts, apparently. So I was frustrated because it's a 30-hour game. Now, back in the day, you could get a Final Fantasy game and it would play for about 100 hours. I mean, we sunk about 70 to 80 hours into Final Fantasy X. So I just felt like it was a little bit of a... I mean, this doesn't take away from the fact it's an amazing game because he's he's just he's gone straight back into hard mode now. He just wants to keep playing it. He just loves it. He thinks it's amazing. He can't believe what they've done with it. And it's it's not even just a remake. It's a reimagining of the story. Like, they've added so much content to it. I mean, it, it's literally where you are playing this game is only the first four hours of the original game. But they've made 30 hours worth of gameplay because what they've done is expanded the whole city section so that you can go to places you haven't seen before, do things that you wouldn't have done before. And just, you know, I mean, it's it, he's just mind blown by it. It's a reimagining rather than a remake. And to some extent, they did that with the Resi ones, but they did keep them very close to the original stories. You know, there was a big bit of moaning about the fact that Resi 3 was only five hours long. And... Um, you know, Resi Seven was uh, Resi Two was seven hours, I think. But five hours, I mean, God's sake! I remember when oh, what was it called? The Order eighteen eighty six came out for the PS four uh, near the beginning of its life cycle, and it got absolutely hammered for the fact that it was only six hours long or something. People just or seven hours, whatever it was. People just went for it for the jugular on them saying it's just outrageous asking for that amount of money for a game that's six hours long or seven hours long. And yet Resi 3 remake comes out. It's only five hours long and I, I heard grumbles about it, but I didn't hear anybody going for the throat because I think, you know, mainly because it's a beloved franchise and it's a, a re a remake of something that doesn't look great in the first place, I guess now, but it's interesting how people will justify it for something, but not justify it for something else. So, yeah, I've just got this grumble that I would still have preferred it to have been one game for 90 hours, not three games for 30 hours apiece. I mean, you know, but that's me basing my concept of the original game you could have probably played for 100 hours. <laughs> so, but... You know, you're getting more... I, I suppose you're getting more bang for your... Well, you're not getting bang for your buck. Because you're going to be paying, right? The original game would probably have cost £30 at the time for 100 hours worth of gameplay, right? They're now asking you for 50 quid every time they release one, and they're doing it three times. So you're paying £150 to see this through to its end. And I just think... I just feel like that is kind of outrageous. <laughs> that is a lot of money for... Uh, for what I believe should have been one game. But, you know, but as I said to Aaron, I'm judging that against, I'm judging that against Final Fantasy games and even RPG games to some extent, but to Final Fantasy games especially because they've always been ones you sink a lot of hours into, um, including its original. But if I actually say, well, that game's 30 hours and... Nathan, you know, Uncharted 4 was, I don't know, 15 hours. And I paid as much money for two of them. So what am I moaning about? I got 30 hours of that one and I got 50. You know, so you could argue that, yeah, OK, but you're arguing against something that's maybe a day's gone by. Maybe I shouldn't expect 100 hours out of a game anymore. Maybe that like the world's changed. The development time it takes to make it now is changed. And what have you, you know, I think to some extent, I think I would have been more forgiving if games were still 40 quid. Because I'm still frustrated that we're paying 45 to 50 quid for games. I think it's it, it's it's not needed, in my opinion. You know, I, I especially for the AAA titles, like it's a lot of money. 
mean, 40, 40 quid's a lot of money. Do you know what I mean? It's like... I mean, there's a... It's the... I don't know. I guess you'd have to weigh it up against the how development costs have gone up or salaries or that sort of thing. But, you know, the game industry makes more than the film industry now, people. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not like they're short of bucks. You know what I mean? The smaller companies might be. You know, that's a different thing. But, you know, and there's still no scaling. Like, let's take... Oh, I don't want to say Greedfall because it actually feels worth its money at the minute, but it is from a smaller dev. I'm trying to think of a game that was from a smaller dev. All right, let, let's take Sonoa Sacrifice, right? Which is a good example, actually, because I'm pretty sure Sonoa Sacrifice was not 50 quid when it came out. I'm pretty sure it was 25 quid or something. Or 20. It wasn't a lot of money. And that is from, that at the time, I know it's a Microsoft studio now, but at the time, it was a smaller company making a game that was not classed as a triple a title but it it you know it was trying to match them visually and in its acting and in its environments and, and all that sort of stuff but it for me was not a 50 pound game you know you, you could play through it in a quite a short period of time it was a great experience it was a fantastic game but it, they put it out at, i think it was 20 25 pound i'm sure it was it wasn't it wasn't 50 pound anyway so they need to put scaling into it. You know, smaller devs need to realise that they can't just... Why Why? Why are you going to release a game that people are unsure about for 50 quid a pop? Why don't you release it for 30 quid a pop and maybe sell twice the amount of copies? Like, you're, you're, surely you'll get more revenue out of that than you will out of getting 50 quid a copy from a tenth of the people that are, that are going to buy it and everyone else is unsure until it drops in price. I've never understood that. I mean, I guess I'd have to see the, the, the stats as to whether or not that's true i mean i'm saying it it would happen uh, but i would have been i would have bought greedfall and it's a bad example because actually now that i'm playing greedfall i think i would probably have paid 40 quid for it anyway or you know I, I still don't think i would pay 50 quid for any game though to be fair unless it's an absolute belter uh, i still feel a bit robbed if it's over 40 quid but greedfall um I mean, I would have bought that at launch if it had been £30. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Without any shadow of a doubt. But I wasn't about to spend 50 quid on it when I was unsure as to what sort of product I was going to get because it was a smaller developer. And you're, it's like you're asking the same amount of money for a game. Right? Let's, like, I don't know what the figures are, but let's say that Deep Silver have got 40 people in their team that make that game. As an example, I don't think it might not be that much. Say 30 people. I don't know. I don't know. This is all guesswork. But let's say they've got 30 to 40 people in their team. And then they make that game over four years, three years, four years. And yet, and they and then they sell it for £50. And yet you've got another company over here who've got a team of 150 people making a AAA title. And they sell their game at the, at the, the same price. It's like, well, hang on a minute. <laughs> surely the amount it took to make that game is more than the amount it took to make that game so why are they the same price that it, it like it needs a, some sort of scaling system in it not every game is worth 50 quid like it it can't possibly be can it you know what i mean it's like that's my feeling on it you know what i mean it's like maybe the price should be judged on what it costs to make it maybe which is what that's how life works everywhere else you know you don't sell a washing machine that was made, you know, let's say I, I bought a hot point because I know hot points are good. But let's say that I'd gone for some make I've never heard of. I wouldn't have paid the same. I mean, if there's two stood side by side and the same price, I'm not going to buy the one I've never heard of. I'll buy the hot point one because I know that they're tried and tested. So the real world, it needs to match the real world and stop asking people for 50 quid just because it's a new game. Like it just because it's a new game doesn't mean it's worth 50 quid. Anyway, and as I say, Greedfall is a bad example because I'm absolutely adoring that game at the minute. <clears throat> um, I did, in the end, get it for 25 I think it was. As it was, uh, price had come down for a little bit. <clears throat> and there'll be more of that going up over the weekend. We'll talk about that in a bit, though. I've lost track of where I was now. <laughs> Gone off onto pricing of games. But anyway, oh yeah, so it's because Final Fantasy was split into three. So other than that, so here's the good news. The good news is that um, my birthday's in a week or so's time. And Aaron has just bought that for my birthday. God bless him. Hey, eh? Loves his dad. <laughs> so I was made up with that. Um, so he's, uh, he's, well, 
he threw the money over into my account and I, I, I bought it. However, here's the thing. You, you'd be hard stuck to find a hard copy of that game. And I, the only place I could find a physical copy that wasn't stupidly overpriced because people are trying to cash in on it was game. Game were the only people that had copies left that I could find. Everywhere else I went, my usual suspects that I normally buy everything from all sold out, including Amazon, who I don't use that much now for games. But uh, Amazon was sold out. Oh, no, Amazon had it, but it was like 65 quid. It probably wasn't Amazon selling that at that price. It was probably some company on the Amazon site. And Simply Games sold out, Game Collection sold out. I mean, everywhere, everywhere that I would have normally tapped into. And I thought, I'll just check game and game, game had it. So I ordered that. It should come in a few days. Cheeky feckers, they charge you five quid for a two-day delivery on a game. <laughs> so why are you charging me five pounds for second-class postage? What's that all about? Like, everywhere else does it for free. In fact, everywhere else does it for free, and I usually get it a day later, not two days later. It's like, what? It's no wonder you're constantly going into fucking administration. What, what, what are you doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't, it baffles me, it really does. And then they bleat to the fucking heavens when they, they go into administration about, it's the, it's the market, we can't cut. It's like, it's not the market, it's because you're doing it wrong. <laughs> You've been doing it wrong for so long, you think it's everyone else's fault, for feck's sake. Your shops are too overpriced and you keep blaming it on the fact that you've got overheads and people online don't. And I keep saying this, like, you've got an online facility. So what you do is you get your online facility to offset against your shops so that you can you can support each other rather than just say it's everyone else's fault. But what happens, you can actually buy stuff cheaper on the game website than you can in a shop. <laughs> Where's the fucking logic in that? Makes no sense whatsoever. And then when they go into administration, they'll all go bust anyway. Like, it makes absolutely no sense. It's complete and utter nonsense, like... Anyway, I've ordered it from them because they were the only people that had them. But that's the, like the only th time I've used game in about five years. <laughs> it's, no bloody it's no bloody wonder they're the only ones with copies left. If that <laughs> They're charging people five quid for a two-day delivery. Anyway, I'm saying that. It could well be that that delivery has just been put on there recently because of I've realised the shops are actually shut and all, online is all they've got. But uh, it wouldn't surprise me if their shops end up going into administration again if they haven't already because they don't support each other but their online service is certainly still up and running but maybe that delivery charge has been done because of covid or whatever i've no idea but um, anyway it's on its way so i shall have final fantasy 7 the remake in a couple of days but the chances are i won't play it until a, a week's time when i get my week off and i'll proper enjoy it because i do want to give you guys all of greedfall because i'm enjoying it so much i want to see the see that game through and think we'll probably scratching the surface of it at the moment and i am still playing path of exile i keep getting messages from people saying please put up more so i am doing um i need to push through that path of exile point though where i keep getting to a certain point in that game and then i don't play it and so everything i'm seeing i've already seen it five times so i'm i'm kind of keep my enjoyment up of it <laughs> <laughs> but um but you're asking for it and if you keep liking it i'll keep giving you more of it um i realized that all of the other things i asked you about the dragon age and all that sort of stuff kind of fell by the wayside but i can only play so much in a week people so at the moment path of exile is good to balance with greedfall because path of exile takes a little bit less thought process for me because i kind of know where i'm going what i'm doing just trudging through the areas and enjoying them and and leveling up and getting me gems and what have you so it's it's easy for me to play them and log the things i need to write down greedfall is kind of offset with that as a completely different type of rpg and um and i'm really enjoying it so i'm going to stick with those at the minute and uh and see how we get on we have uh I was going to move on to that at the end. So there we are. Well, tell me, what you, I, I want your comments on, just going back to remakes, <clears throat> on whether or not you've been loving these remakes that have come out. Um, I'm so stoked for playing Final Fantasy VII now that Aaron has just adored it as much as he has. And I have seen, you know, other comments from people in the industry saying just how amazing the game is. Even people that were already moaners like me about the fact it was split into three games have said that, even though they moaned about it, it is just amazing. And it does it does feel like you've played a full game. It doesn't feel like you've just ended disc one. <laughs> but still leaves you wanting more sort of thing. So, yeah, so I'm super stoked to be playing it. Also, let me know in the comments below if you want to see me play any of it on the channel. 
Uh, Final Fantasy 13, I did I did a bit of when it hit back and part, and I stopped doing it because it kept getting copyrighted. And funnily enough, when Final Fantasy 7 came out, uh, this that was like a year ago. I did that with Final Fantasy 13, and I, I put a you can do a a dispute to say, well, it's fair use. I'm only talking over it and playing it. I'm not. It's usually for the music, you see. So. It, it, they kind of think that I'm nicking the music to do something else with. And it's like, well, I'm not. I'm just, it's in the game. I can't get rid of it. So I'm just talking over it. It's just fair use. And maybe 60% of the time you'll get a response saying, yeah, that's fine. We've released it. Crack on. But it can take them months and months and months. And that was a year ago. And they must have, whatever they've been doing with Final Fantasy VII, they've done something because they've suddenly someone's realized I put those copyright claims in for Final Fantasy XIII to say it's fair use. Please rethink it. And uh, I suddenly got three, four notifications. Was it three or four? Three or four notifications saying they've been released and you can crack on. <laughs> so, um, because that's the only reason I stopped playing it. I was absolutely loving playing Final Fantasy Thirteen at the time, showing it off to you guys on the back and pad. So, uh, why, how did I get to that? <clears throat> oh, yes. Yes, the, the copywriting. Yeah... Um, Somebody asked me as well. I feel like I've gone right off track there of what I was saying. But anyway, somebody while I'm on copyright, and somebody asked me as well, why was there no more Shadows Awakening? And it's the same reason. It kept both of the ones I put up got copyrighted immediately. And it's not like I keep saying like there's not enough views on my channel to for me to be concerning myself with the fact that oh they're not giving me any money. I don't do it for the money, but it's a point of principle, right? Um, let's say that that video that I've got on my channel with a million views in it. You know, that video in itself has helped me pay for the things that I've bought in order to give you guys the content I'm giving you, like the new cameras and the new microphones and all that sort of stuff. Even the, the high-end broadband so that I can upload stuff good and download stuff good. And, you know, it's like the, it gives me that little bit of payback in order to just provide you guys with some content. And it it just winds me up no end that once a video is copyrighted, I get nothing. Every now and then it'll come back and say it's been copyrighted and they're sharing the proceeds with you. Now that's fine. Absolutely fine. Like, I'd get that. It's like, right, okay, fine. But bear in mind, this isn't money going to the game company. This is money going to the person who wrote the music, I assume. Because it's only the music that's getting copyrighted. It's not the game. So, anyway, uh, that's the reason that No More Shadows Awakening went up. I put a couple of fair use things off to them to say it's fair use. I'm just doing this. Haven't heard back, so I'm not going to do any more until... It's just a point of principle, people. It's like, if you want free advertising for your game, then don't be doing that. Because it's just doing you nothing but damage. Especially with the smaller titles like that. That's exactly the type of game that should not be copyrighting stuff. Because... It's. I mean, the amount of people that would discover that game with just little channels like me doing uh, some Let's Play on it, I mean, they will probably, they will sell copies out of that. In fact, there was already one person said they bought it because they'd seen what I played. So they've already made, like, whatever it is, 25 quid they're selling it for now. They've just made 25 quid for me just showing a video of it. It's like, what? Do you think, I, I've not made 25 quid out of that video. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, what's the problem? And the people will keep discovering those videos for years to come. You know, videos that I have now that have got 100 views, oh, I might look at them. Final Fantasy XIII is a prime example. I put those up. At the time, I only got about 40 to 50 views on them. I thought, oh, they're not very popular. Um, but I kept, I, I did three or four of them anyway. And then I looked at them about, I don't know, it was like six months later, I went back to them. And they both, like, the, their first one had, like, 1,500, 2,000 views or something. I was like, bloody hellfire. So it, they just sort of, they go up the ladder of things discovered and, and they suddenly get loads of views. And it was like that with the one that ended up with a million views. When I first put it up, it only had, like, 20 views on it. And then all of a sudden, I look at it about a year later and it's got, like, 100,000 views. And I was like, what? <laughs> 15 minutes of me just riding around in a Jeep, not even talking. I'm just, like, PS4 shared it. Anyway, I digress somewhat, people. Somewhat. I've lost all track of where I was now. Anyway, let me know in the comments below about whether or not you want to see me playing some Final Fantasy VII. And, uh, or whether I should just play it off camera. But let me know. That won't take away from the fact you'll still get... Uh, you, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't take away from the fact you would still get the content I would normally give you. Because... Um, I would usually record stuff for you guys of the evening. And depending on how the decking goes with my mission to redo my decking outside 
Um, I would probably play Final Fantasy during the day, I think. So, in my holiday time. That is. But anyway, let me know if you want to see some. Uh, it's a highly unlikely I would do a full playthrough of it, but you can let me know if you want to see it. I've no idea, though, as I say, whether there'd be, there'd be copyright in it, but they just released the copyrights for the ones that I did on 13, so maybe it's something they've realised and they don't want to, to do that because they want to get it pushed out on YouTube as much as possible. Um, I guess it leads us to the question of what do we want to see? We're going to go over an hour for this <laughs> this vlog because i rattled on for half an hour about covid and, and donald trump <laughs> um <clears throat> yeah i guess you can let me know what remakes you would want to see done either i think if you we'll, we'll keep it i mean all right you can let me know any any remake you'd love to see done properly proper full-on remake reimagining sort of thing but primarily what other final fantasy would you not like to see done i mean for me i'd probably i'd love to see 10 reimagined with a new battle system and this but keep the sphere grid because i adored that sphere grid um but it was sort of reimagined and retold um maybe i mean i adore that game but i feel like when i go back to play it now i feel kind of restricted by that battle system and that's why i loved 13 so much because you, you had a bit of freedom to wander about and pick and choose when you fought rather than just getting breaking glass every three footsteps stuff like that so I found it a little bit painful going back to the the mechanics of, of ending up in fights and things becoming very repetitive. So I think it, you know, uh, but likewise, they could, I mean, I would love nine or eight to be redone as well. So eight, nine or ten. And yeah, they could go back because I know a lot of people preferred six to seven. Six is high up on people's favorite Final Fantasy games. So they could go backwards. But will they will they even do another one? Because they only did seven because people just wanted it so badly. So um, they they just got fed up of people asking them for it. But I think when they see the success of Final Fantasy VII remake, but bear in mind you're not even they're not even going to be thinking about doing another one for at least another what five years because it's going to take I would say at least two years between each of these these games. We're not going to get a Final Fantasy remake each year, are we? So. I think we'll see the second part of the 7 remake in two years' time, and maybe two years' time after that, we'll see that again. Oh, so this is coming cross-gen as well. So the other two... There might be an update for this one right enough that plays it, you know, more spectacularly on the PS5, what have you. I hear that it's a year's worth of... It's only on the PlayStation for a year, I think, and then it'll move on to Xbox as well. So Xbox players will get to play Final Fantasy VII Remake. Whether or not that's true of every launch, I don't know. You know, does Final Fantasy Remake, 7 Remake Part 2 and Part 3, do they get a year's exclusivity? They might do, which is going to be really frustrating for the... Well, I just suppose it's the same gap, isn't it? Because you're waiting a year for it, so it'll still be two years, but yeah. It's still frustrating, though, if you want to play it on Xbox. So yeah, it's a good, it's a good one to have. The old, but PlayStation does so well with their exclusivity this year. Uh, this de this gen, I should say. So there you are. That's pretty much all we had. Let me know in the comments below what remakes you would like to see from either the Resi franchise or the uh, Final Fantasy franchise, or indeed anything else. If you wanna, if you wanna think of anything else, let me know in the comments below. I will get that poll up so that we can uh, we can see what people thought about whether they wanted Resi Four up uh, remade first or Code Veronica remade first. We'll have both people, but which order did you want them in? And that's pretty much it, people. That is pretty much it. I will leave you with, you are getting, well, you got a Greedfall today. You are getting a Path of Exile and a Greedfall tomorrow. And you are getting a Path of Exile and a Greedfall on Sunday. And they are up at 9 o'clock and uh, Path of Exile at 9 o'clock in the morning. And then 12 o'clock and the same on Sunday for Path of Exile and Greedfall at 12 o'clock. So 9 and 12. Uh, one in the morning, one at lunch. So there you are. I have covered you over the weekend and today, people. Two videos today. One of Greedful, one of me. <laughs> two tomorrow, Greedful, Path of Exile. And two on Sunday, Path of, Path of Exile, Greedful. There you are. I hope you enjoy it, people. I hope you soak it all up and enjoy the wonderful tones of my, my voice. <laughs> well, let's face it. All I've got left, people. Nobody wants to see this face. Not really. I should blur it out. <laughs> Ooh, flagons up. We'll have another sip while I'm with you. Well, there you are. That's all I had to say. That could well be the first vlog that's gone over a, over an hour. And mainly it's because I went on a rant about Donald Trump. 
<laughs> I feel like I should lop that whole section out. Anyway, I think I will put at the beginning of the video, like I said, like, please go to 20 blah minutes in order to skip all that nonsense. <laughs> so there you are. Anyway, I'll finish up there. Otherwise, I'll just be spraffing about nothing, which I can do very easily. People trust me. It's a it's a given. It's a God given gift. I think you'll find. So anyway, I hope you're all keeping really well. Uh, please make sure you get out for a bit of your exercise and get a bit of a bit of the, the sun rays on yourself. It does really help the, the soul to be outside and even just two metres away, smile and nod at somebody else that's a human being, especially if you live alone like me. Um, so I hope you're all keeping well and I hope my videos that I'm giving you are helping. There was two days of the week I didn't give you anything and then somebody started telling me off. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> it's like, God say it's only two days. <laughs> To be fair, the only reason that you didn't get videos on those two days was because I spent so many hours trying to find somewhere online that I could get the stuff I needed to do the decking. I had to, the, the jet wash that I was buying, or wanted, the specific one that I wanted, because it was just right in every way, I just could not find it anywhere because they were selling out and eventually got it from the actual company itself on their website. But I had to buy the more expensive version of it, which came with a whole bunch of extra stuff. And then I spent hours and hours on the, the following night on the, the B&Q slash Wix website, which have an hour's waiting time half the time to actually get in to do anything. And then when I was in there, some of the products were deliverable, some of them weren't deliverable, some of them were collectible, some of them were collectible. I mean, it was just, honestly, it was like a never-ending job. It's like, I eventually got everything I needed, but it literally took those two evenings of, it was like three hours of an evening. And that's the only reason you didn't get anything, because those two evenings, I was meant to be recording stuff for you. Anyway, I did manage to get quite a bit up for you uh, between A Path of Exile yesterday, Breed Full today, and this. And then what I've given you over the weekend, two videos a day over the weekend, and I shall probably do more recording on Sunday. Uh, the sun is splitting the trees, people, and I am probably going to wander into that room there to edit all this together. And if I do it quickly enough, I can sit in the garden and uh, enjoy the rays. So there you are. I hope this has brought you some company in this uh, horrible time of ours. I hope the videos I'm putting up for you over the weekend will help you get through the weekend and enjoy it. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you once again in this vlog of mine, and I shall see you all next time. Take it easy, folks. Bye.